Peace and blessings, family. I'm your brother in the struggle, Brother Minister Alif. And today we're going to cover the pros and cons of filing bankruptcy. The Bible teaches us in the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 7, that the rich rules over the poor and that the borrower is the slave to the lender. But it also teaches us in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19, that money is the answer to everything. So today, fam, we're going to give you some free business information. We're going to cover different types of bankruptcy for the sake of clarity and simplicity. What I'm going to do today is we're going to keep it real simple. I'm going to do this in parts, maybe like three parts. So this would be part one of three. That way you could take the information, you could digest it, you can research it on your own, and you can put it into action on your own, okay? You can seek help if you need help. You could email me if you need me to uh, come in and help you out some kind of way. But knowledge is power. So let's get into this. One of the main mistakes I see a lot of people make is they don't realize that there's a law on the books now. Before you can file bankruptcy in the United States of America, you have to take this online bankruptcy course by the federal government. Now, that course is known as the credit counseling course and is from the direct order of the bankruptcy abuse prevention and consumer protection act that was passed in 2005 so only approved credit counseling agencies online can provide you a certificate that certificate is good for 180 days. So say you went online, you took your bankruptcy class. It's not a hard class. Don't, don't be intimidated by it. Um, um, you, you cannot let me get the certificate for you or you can't let someone else take the class for you. You must legally take that course on your own. Um, the good thing is um, it's not difficult. It has a little helper thing in there or you can um, email me or give me a call and I could come on on online with you and, and, and walk you through it if, if necessary. You know what I mean, but but the, don't forget to take and get your certificate before you even think about filing the bankruptcy. The purpose of that course is. They want you to understand how did you get in the financial situation that you're in? And that way, they'll offer you alternatives to bankruptcy. See, some people, it's just they, they had the money or they just, the way they pay their bills, the way they do, they, they manage their credit cards. It's just that they don't have enough information on juggling stuff. Some people good with uh Balancing the budget. Some people is horrible. Now I mean, you know, some people do it off the cuff. Some people is real meticulous. Now I mean, the average person is not. So don't don't think that um, you're a bad person because you're in debt. The whole world is in debt. The government is in debt. The government owes over twenty trillion dollars. I mean, you know, there 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 are uh, uh, people right across the street from you, next door to you, that are in credit card debt. A lot of people online act like they rich and all that. People are juggling and living paycheck to paycheck in the wilderness of North America. Now, I mean, we're good consumers in this country, but we, at the end of the day, this is a capitalist and perilous system. It's uh, the system we live in right now is the one we got to work with right now. It's the one we have to utilize right now. Um, no matter how uh, Christian or Muslim or atheist or black or white or old or young or educated or uneducated, you may think you are. At the end of the day, you want some of those 
fiat bills or promissory notes or pennies, dimes, nickels, dollars, $5 bills, $10 bills, $20 bills, the Benjamins, what have you, in your pocket. You want those those credit cards. You know what I mean? You want to you wanna have a way to pay your bills and survive in this day and time. Okay, so that's just the, the reality of it. So don't call me or email me with the supreme conspiracy stuff. This is not a sovereignty thing. I'm not into that. I don't believe in anything spooky. So only come at me with the spooky stuff. Not me. Now, if you want to talk reality, mathematics, you want to talk um, the reality of the situation. Cool. Now, I mean, I can I can give you some free advice and free tips and information, whatever the case may be. However, I can't uh do all your homework for you and all that kind of stuff like that there. You know what I mean? I'm giving you the game so that you could do it for yourself. This is a DIY personal bankruptcy. Now I'm gonna cover a whole bunch of other types of bankruptcies, but I'm gonna just cover them really for uh practical matters just so that you know but those type of bankruptcies is is, is not what I want you the average consumer, the average person that's in debt to focus on. So we're really going to focus on one primary type of bankruptcy. That's that's basically your chapter seven bankruptcy because um, the people that I know and deal with and interact with, that's their problem. Their, their problem is they got credit card debt. They, they behind on the rent. They behind on mortgages and car notes. They they not able to pay their utilities and, and put gas in the car. Now I mean you know that 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 um um checking account is on E. Now I mean so so this is a a good option for people in those types of situations. Now I mean it's not rocket science. It's not something um it's it's kind of uh tedious, but it's, you can do it. I believe, I believe the average person can do it on their own. I mean, you know, some people ain't into like the mumble jumble. They they don't like reading a lot of small print and preparing documents and going online, filling out, um, fancy forms and things of that nature. Some people ain't computer savvy. They, 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 you know, they don't know how to download something or send, um, documents online and things of that nature there one of the one of the options you also have is you can utilize your public free library for assistance there there are um um computers and things faxes and things that is either free or that at low cost if you don't have equipment at home or whatever the case may be and you can always um get a professional lawyer or what have you, but of course that's going to cost um, a little bit more money. I would say a lot more money. Some people can't afford to do that. So for those of you that find yourself in that type of situation, holler at me. I'll get you through this. Don't even worry about it. All right. So what is it basically? That certificate is is basically um bankruptcy is a legal process basically it bankruptcy helps individuals and businesses don't think that bankruptcy is just for rich people <laughs> i mean bankruptcy is for um poor people low income people middle class people it's for anybody any anyone that that is considered a legal citizen in the United States of America you have state and federal constitutional rights to due process, equal protection. You got protection against um, unlawful searches and seizures, um, excessive fines, and things of that nature. There, so 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 you want to use your constitutional right to privilege. Uh, former President Trump used his several times. <laughs> I mean, you know, there there are. Smart people in the hip hop industry, they be like, "Oh, so and so filed bankruptcy." He or she was smart. Some people understand that they can restructure things by filing a chapter seventeen or a chapter thirteen or what have you, depending on that situation. But I want to teach you how to do your own chapter seven 
bankruptcy. We're going to cover several prongs. This is what you'll basically learn for free. What is bankruptcy? Why you need a certificate before you can file. The pros and cons of bankruptcy. Who can file for bankruptcy? What kind of bankruptcy is for you? How to benefit from a fresh financial start. How to repair your credit after bankruptcy. How much will it cost to file bankruptcy on your own? A working definition of bankruptcy is basically a legal process to help individuals and or businesses because you can individually or as a partnership, you can file bankruptcy if you have an LLC, an S Corp, a C Corp. A nonprofit, 501c3, IRS recognized nonprofit, it doesn't make any difference. You know, McDonald's can file bankruptcy, a, a, a realtor can file bankruptcy, a hip hop artist can file bankruptcy, a hairstylist, a barber, a janitor, what have you. All right, so you as an individual, you can also file uh, bankruptcy. Um, what I see in the community, the primary thing, this is why I'm focusing on chapter seven. The main thing that I'd be saying when it comes to chapter seven or bankruptcies is that people have consumer credit. Like say you got somebody um, at one time, they was doing real good. They was working. They had their own business. Uh, business was good. They was making a little extra money. Um, that credit score was doing good. That business Paydex score was doing good. You know, that say you got a 720, 800, 850 credit score. You got a, um, your business got an 80 Paydex score or 100 Paydex score, meaning that your business has good credit and you get the $10,000 Spark card. You got the $10,000 Save Your Card, $50,000 this, that, and the other. You, know, you got the American Express business. You got the Inc. business cards and everything's looking good. But then you start, um, Forgetting that the credit is really a loan. So you start using the credit cards more and more. And, you know, you're using your credit card like an ATM machine. And every month you got to borrow from Peter to pay Paul. So what usually happens is it collapses on you. Now I mean, it catches up to you and you can't pay all these bills. So now you're getting late fees. I mean, you get you getting um um. The bank is giving you late fees, you know what I mean? So now you're, you, you're in this deep cycle where you can't get out, you know what I mean? And and before you know it, your credit score is falling apart. The business credit is falling apart. Uh, I've been seeing, they'll take, like, say you got a, a $50,000 credit card. They'll reduce it to $10,000. You got a $10,000 um, Spark card. They reduce it to two to four or two thousand dollars same thing with savior american express what have you know what i mean so so basically you wind up in a situation where all these different creditors like yo you owe us this you owe us this and it adds up and now you're like man i, I owe fifty thousand a hundred thousand of five hundred thousand millions you know what i mean and there's no need to panic <laughs> because you still have your constitutional right to privilege you can still go to bankruptcy court and you can file chapter seven and get yourself from under all that debt. Debt is slavery. You can you can get out of economic slavery. You know what I mean? Um, when you do that, you want to do it properly. You want to do it legally. You want to you want to do it in, in a way where the bankruptcy judge is not going to be mad at you. The bankruptcy judge, a lot of people don't understand um, the bankruptcy judge actually is going to work with you, especially if you come what they call pro se, meaning you're, you're, you're filing without a lawyer. Now, if you have the money, you can afford it, whatever, you get your professional lawyer, you ain't got to worry about none of that. You know what I mean? But if you are struggling and you like, man, I, I, I really don't even have um, $10,000, $50,000 to, you know, to do this stuff, you can, you can do it on your own. 
Now, I mean, this this is why this this is why these three videos that I'm gonna share with you is gonna put you in a situation where you could take your phone, your tablet, your 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 laptop, your PC, or personal computer. You can go to the free library, use that computer, do some research, whatever you can um go in there and um you can download the bankruptcy um paperwork. You could go on your particular every now keep in mind every state is different. Like like I'm in Pennsylvania. We're gonna we're gonna get into the certificates and and how the Justice Department um recommends certain places for certification when it comes to your bankruptcy certificates. Now I mean you can't file your bankruptcy anywhere. Like if you're in Virginia, I can't file uh your bankruptcy in Pennsylvania or if you're in Florida, you can't file your bankruptcy in New York under normal circumstance. Some people, you know, it's always an exception to every rule. You know what I mean? So I don't, nothing is, you know, etched in stone. I like I like to be flexible and everything because a person may say, well, my situation, I got um three houses. I got a summer house. I got a, 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 a log cabin up in the Poconos, but I live over Jersey. You know what I mean? You know, so so your circumstances may put you in a situation where you you can do that, but that's rare. Now, I mean, you know, for those those rare situations, that's where you just email me, just send me a copy of your documents, let me look it over, whatever. I give you a call, whatever, and um, we'll we'll, we'll work through that. But I'm talking in general. I'm I'm you know, it's not there's nothing cookie cutter with this. Now, I mean, in general terms, you can file your chapter seven bankruptcy in the district that you legally are living under, meaning they have what's called subject matters jurisdiction there. Now, I mean, like if, if, if I'm in Pennsylvania and I live in the Philadelphia side of Pennsylvania, we have out here what's called the Eastern District Court. If I'm in the middle of the state, if I'm up, say, by Huntington somewhere, we have a middle district court. If we're out Pittsburgh or Allegheny County, you're in the Western District Court. But I can't file in Ohio or I can't file in Canada or I can't file in, in New York or, or, or West Virginia, for, for, for example. I mean, so, so don't just file a bank. Don't file paperwork just to be filing some paperwork. Now, I mean, you know, it's like try to examine it. Do you want peep it? analyze it, deputize it, scrutinize it. And you, you know yourself, you'd be like, if you feel within your heart, like, yeah, I th it's going to be a little struggle, but I think I could do this on my own. Go ahead and do that on your own. Now, I mean, as you're doing it on your own for free, don't overwhelm me, but for free, if you need, if you need some help, you just go ahead and send me a little text or email and, um, as long as it's nothing real complicated, I, I can't go read no books. I can't go type um, 20 pages and all this other stuff. But if it's something like you just stuck somewhere, you got a question or whatever, I'll just email or text that information right over to you to help you to help yourself. All right. So uh, that's basically what the bankruptcy is. It's a legal process to help individuals as well as businesses, any type of business that cannot repay an outstanding debt. OK, uh, it, it, it either eliminate, not all the way, always it's a hundred percent, but normally it eliminate or repay some or all the debts under the protection of the district court. It helps ease your burden financially, as well as provide fair treatment to those that you owe the debt to. Now, I mean, now these credit card companies and things of that nature there, you know, uh, normally they, they, they have insurance. Now, I mean, so that thing is once the judge grants your chapter seven bankruptcy, they're going to get all that money anyway. <laughs> I mean, so so they 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 got themselves covered. However, to protect the general public where, you know, interest rates keep going up and things of that nature there. They don't want people just filing bankruptcy just to file bankruptcy. So what they did, they, they put a little uh roadblock to separate the pretenders from the defendants. They said, okay, if you if you want to file bankruptcy, we want you to go to bankruptcy class. Now, I didn't walk um, several clients through that class. Um, I remember uh, seeing some of the websites were fraudulent. Um, some of them had 
hidden fees on them. Like, like some of them, they, they wasn't illegal fees. It's just that if you're filing bankruptcy, obviously you're financially struggling. So, you know, some of them was like trying to charge people up to get them that certificate, what they, which they need in order to file a bankruptcy. So, you know, we was able to do some research and what, what I found was that there are nonprofit um, organizations that are recognized by the U.S. Justice Department, they will allow you to come on their website and you watch the video, you answer some little basic questions like, you know, they'd be like, um, um, you know, do you work? Is you employed, unemployed, self-employed? How much money do you bring in every two weeks a month? How much is your rent? How much is your, and stuff that you won't really understand, but the simple stuff to you, they'd be like, how much is your electric bill? Um, do you, do you buy and do you have subscriptions to magazines? Do you pay for cable? Do you have a phone bill? Um, do you get your hair done? Do you get your nails done? Not me. Um, how much do you spend on sneakers and boots and food, whatever. And, and when you finish the course, the computer is going to analyze your assets and your liability is going to ask, you know, analyze that stuff in like a couple of, and now that this was, this was like, um, easy back in the day, but now we got this new AI technology. I'm, I'm pretty sure this new stuff is going to be even more fancier and faster. Now I mean, but, the, but the good thing for you is I personally never seen a client that didn't get approved for that bankruptcy. Now, I mean, you know, I did see problems come up on several occasions and it might be something like they need some more information or something of that nature there. And we just give it the additional information and we're good to go. Because when you're pro se or you're acting without a lawyer, as I was saying earlier, the bankruptcy judge is going to definitely be patient with you, work with you. They don't want you filing frivolous stuff that is not in harmony with the bankruptcy um, rules and regulations, you know, so, so, um, keep it simple. Now, I mean, you know, just do just, you know, less is more. All they, all they want is just the basics and basically they understand. They just want like, um, that you're going to have to zip, make a Xerox copy of all your credit cards because they, you know, all those credit card companies have to be notified that, yo, I'm filing bankruptcy. And the good thing, the judge going to let them know, like, listen, don't nobody call this person that's um, filing bankruptcy. And I mean, you know, they, 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 that thing would be like all the phone calls going to stop, you know, and, and, and it's a, it's a blessing disguise, all that stress you was under all that the rest, you know, trying to figure out how you're going to pay these bills and things of that nature there. That's the, that's the benefit or the privilege of um, living here in the wilderness of North America, regardless of your political position. Now, I mean, you know, you want to, you want to utilize your, your, your state and constitutional rights to help you help yourself. Okay. So under chapter seven, they basically is, is going to be what they call a liquidation for the individuals or, or businesses. Now, I mean, um, now there are a few exceptions to the rule, meaning that there's some things the judge ain't going to really just discharge unless it's real rare um, circumstances. Now, I mean, you know, um, you're going to have to pass what they call the means test. The means test in, in layman's terms uh, is basically saying they're going to compare your income to the median or the average person in your state's income. Now, I mean, like say if you live, if you live in Pennsylvania, it costs less to live in Pennsylvania than it do to live in New York City, for example. New York and California they they spend more money. So so a bankruptcy court in California, New York, would be like, oh, people out here, they're going to have a higher income. I mean, because the cost of living out here is high. But somebody living in a smaller rural town, that, that cost of living, may you know, the rent may be way cheaper. You know what I mean? You'd be like, um, the mortgage may be way cheaper where you live at. So it's, it's, it's not cookie cutter, as I said, it's going to be a case by case, unique 
and tell a situation, every single bankruptcy is absolutely unique for that particular individual. And yours will not be any different if you choose to um, file bankruptcy. Now, I mean, however, the uh, once you get your bankruptcy off the ground, the good thing, the good thing is I see the smiles on people's faces. Now, I mean, I, I you know, I, I was uh, at the um, um, ATM with a with a client a couple of days ago. And I'm just on the side, you know what I mean? And and um when that person went to the ATM, they 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 made a little gas. I'm like, you all right? He's like, yeah, I, I didn't know I had this much money in here. And and what it was, it's not that they received some money, it's just that they were so used to paying all these bills <laughs> every month. You know, you gotta pay Visa, this Visa, this MasterCard, this Mas, this this card, this card. You know what I mean? And and the good thing is, when you get cleared of that debt, and you don't have to pay all them bills. Now the bad thing is, the bad side is, is pros and cons as you're gonna see in here to everything. But the but the um. The con side is you're going to have to pay child support, um, student loans. Uh, if you owe the IRS, you know, back taxes and things of that nature. Then you get, well, I'm filing bankruptcy. I ain't going to pay my taxes. It don't go like that. They'll let you file your bankruptcy and all that. But the good thing is uh, even situations, I, I know I know people, I know clients that owe the IRS Ten thousand, fifty thousand dollars, whatever. If you simply call the IRS, I'm, I'm I'm telling you, just simply call the IRS, and I'm just giving. I'm gonna give you the short version. Of what we usually do, we we'll call the IRS. Be like, yo, quit ducking. And don't ignore that letters. You 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 getting charged interest for all them late fees. You making the situation worse. Deal with it. Face your fears. Call the IRS up. Call and be like, listen. So and so owes you ten thousand dollars. They don't have it. I mean, what can we do about this? They be like, well, they can't pay the ten thousand dollars. What can they pay? <laughs> I mean, well, right now they um working part time, or uh, they working here there at, at a at a low paying job, and every two weeks they bring it in this, and they got so many bills they barely stay afloat. They living paycheck to paycheck. What the IRS basically do. They send you a form. I believe it's only the last time I seen it's only like two, two, no more than four pages. I think it's only like two. Real simple. They just want to see how much money you got coming in, and you fill that out on the front. This is how much I get paid. This is my bank account numbers. You could check. I'm not lying or hide no money. And on the back or on the other page, you just fill out. Here's my bills. I got um, children. I got a car. I got rent. I got a mortgage. I got a motorcycle, I got uh, to eat, I got to get deodorant and soap and toothpaste, and you add up all your expenses. And they compare the two, and, and, they, and they'll get back with you, and they'll get back with you, and they'll be like, I'm just using like, say for example, I've seen people that, uh, let me see a, a realistic situation. Realistic, I remember a sister, she owed like, I think it was like three, four thousand dollars. Called the IRS, they, they she sent to the form, we filled the forms all out, Sent it right back to them. They got back with it. Was like, all right, look, this is what we want to do. You give us a hundred and sixty-two dollars within the next thirty days, and after that, you set up automatic payments where you send us forty-two dollars every month until you pay off your three thousand dollars. So she like forty two dollars. You want like less than two hundred? Okay, I, I could put together a hundred. I got a hundred seventy dollars that I could send right now, and I and I going to work. I could definitely send y'all, um, you know, without y'all garnishing my wages and freezing my bank accounts and not have to worry about that. I could sleep good tonight. You know what I mean, so she had a system set up, and it was automatic payment. So it's just like forty something dollars, whatever. And that order little automatic payment from her checking account, when she get her check, boom, that automatically goes to them. Now I mean, it wasn't hurting her. Now I mean, but because she 
um, had her chapter seven bankruptcy, she didn't have no credit card bills. Now, other people be like, yeah, but your credit score is going to be horrible. You're going, you're going to be like, yeah, it's going to be on your credit report for like 10 years. So what? <laughs> it's like, I've, I've be saying people don't understand Americanism. Like in the past, it was all about saving, saving, saving. In this day and time, that is just the normal way to operate inside this capitalist and pearlist system that we're living in. You're, you you can literally lose money by thinking you're just saving some money for a rainy day. Now, I mean, if you're not investing properly, what have you. But long story short, there's a myth that once you file bankruptcy, it's going to be on your credit card report for 10 years, which is true, up to 10 years, um, 7 to 10 years, depending on circumstances. But this is what my experience has been. I've seen with people, and uh, i never seen anyone not be able to do it unless they themselves messed it up. But long story short, the short version is this. You um, say you had your bankruptcy today, and you're on a payment plan with whatever you owe in back taxes with the IRS. Now you still got your little checks coming in if you're getting annuities, if you're getting pensions, you're getting Social Security, if you're working, inheritance, you got your own business, whatever. But the difference is they reset the financial clock. So now this month, you don't have to pay all them bills no more. Them creditors is all quiet now. They they, they like them all them credit cards, you put rubber bands on them, put them, you know, a lot of people tell you cut them up. My thing, don't cut them. You ain't going to use them no more, but just, just put them somewhere in case of something come up in the future and they got a question about something, you still got your copies like, oh, wait a minute, I thought bank, I had this card, this the card right here, you know, so you just just hold them at least three years, you know what I mean? But long story short, because you, you didn't have, the person didn't have to pay all them bills, they saving more money because they went to financial class. So they under, they understand how to budget. I mean, that's part of the class. They're going to teach you literally how to budget for your, your particular circumstances. And, and from you not having to pay all the bills and in the back of your head, you feel so good. You like, oh, I never want to go through that again. I'm not messing this credit up no more. But the person be like, OK, well, you filed bankruptcy today and uh, your credit score is down to a 400. <laughs> you, you got horrible credit. That don't mean you can't take $300 and get you a secure credit card in two days. Two days after your bankruptcy, you could you can literally go on Capital One and be like, listen, my credit score is horrible. <laughs> I just had bankruptcy 48 hours ago. <laughs> I mean... But what they also looking at is your debt to income ratio. So they like, OK, but you don't have no debts no more. You you the bank ain't sweating you no more. The mortgage company ain't sweat. The landlord ain't sweat. The Visa and MasterCard, and American Express. You ain't got to worry about nothing. You don't have no bills like that. All you paying is your regular bills and you're working and, and you and you got little savings in there, they be like, okay, your credit score is absolutely horrible. So we are not giving you a credit card. However, if you want to give us, the credit card company, $300, you could send us $300 and we'll send you a secured credit card. Meaning, we're not going to care about your credit score. We're not, we're not going to give you a hard, and we're not going to do a hard pull on your credit score because you're giving us $300. Now, the bad side of that is the interest rate going to be high. You just filed bankruptcy. The, you know, remember, we're talking 48 hours ago, you just filed bankruptcy. You get them $300. In plain language, ghetto language, they wouldn't, they wouldn't say this is what they're doing. I'm saying this is my street version of it. They gonna rob you for like seventy to ninety dollars on average. They gonna be like, "Listen, send us three hundred dollars, and we're gonna send you a secure credit card. We're gonna keep um, seventy or ninety dollars off the three hundred. But this three hundred dollar card, when we send it to you, is gonna have uh, around two hundred and thirty dollars on it. Now, I mean." 
to $230, $210, every situation, depending on the circumstance. But they'll basically send you a, a, a secure credit card with like $200 on it. Now, you got a you got a Visa or MasterCard in your pocket. It's only $200 on it. My thing is, they took, they're going to charge you like $70 or $90 because your credit is so horrible. So what? Send them that hundred dollars <laughs> payment early, meaning that you want to, you want that gap of that 70 or $90, whatever they charge you, pay that back as soon as you can. If you could do it in two weeks, send them that money. But that little $200 card, your credit score is not going to grow if you don't use that Ragley um, secure credit card, but it will grow if they send you that card and it's two hundred dollars on it, and you just get some gas on that card two times. You just spend like thirty dollars off of it, and you pay the bill in full early every month. You never, ever, 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 ever um, miss a payment. Now your thing is like I know how this credit stuff go, so you you pay them early. You pay them in full. Now you do that for. Three months, you're going to see that little $300 card without you even asking. They're going to raise it to 500. Six months, nine months, you got a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand on credit cards again. So within a year, you now don't have no debt. Now your credit score that was 420. It's now like a 620. It's going back. And you keep doing, you'd be like, I, I would say within like nine months to two years, you have good credit, excellent credit, good good or excellent credit. You know what I mean? So you can repair and heal and remake your credit score. You know what I mean? Even after, it's not going to take you 10 years or seven years to get good credit again. You could do it within a year or two. You know what I mean? You just take some practical steps uh, it's, you don't need no credit repair. You do need to um, educate yourself on how it works and and just do the basics. And I mean, you know, and and you'll and you'll be able to manage it. Don't get a bunch of cards. And I mean, you know, and um, just because they offer you cards, don't mean you gotta call them in and and use them. It's like less is more. Keep that score up. Keep them depths down, and keep your focus. And with that, family, we're going to close for now. We'll take and share with y'all tomorrow, part two. So make sure y'all come back and tune into Do It Yourself Personal Bankruptcy. Peace and blessings, family. One love.